sins are as a drop. Everyone say a drop. They are as a, a drop of a bucket. Mm -hmm. So he says, if you want to know how I view the world, it's one drop. Because in one drop are billions of particles. So if nations are one drop, you don't even really constitute the particle. You somewhere down with the electrons or neutrons. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he goes on to say. He said, and, and are counted as the small dust. Counted, remember now he's talking about nations. He's not talking about people. He's talking about nations. They'll count as the small dust of the balance. Listen to verse 17. No, he did the same thing he did here with, you know, you think, well, okay, I got his perspective. I can start munching on that. Hold on. He's going to back it up. He's going to get further. Verse 17. All, I'm going to say all nations. All nations before him are as? Nothing means you've gone into the negative. It's no longer a positive 10. You're a negative 10. You are as nothing. Hold up. If you think he got his perspective, hold on. And they are counted to him. <laughs> Everyone say all the nations are less than nothing. This is his perspective, holding a little piece of lint up on his finger. And particles that dwell on the piece of lint are the people that are upon the earth. In other words, what God is trying to say is, I got this thing well in control. And you're so busy looking at your problem. And you're so busy looking at the devil that's raising up his head. That you have forgotten the awesomeness of your God. You're so busy looking at the bill collector and what the bill collector can do. And you know they got power to do it that you have forgotten the God that stands up and controls all things after the counsel of his own will if you believe it clap your hands and tell God thank you thank you someone tell him thank you greater than your failures greater than your faults Greater than your insecurities. Greater than your mishaps and your mistakes. He is so great until he has taken what you have done and can turn it into what he wants it to be. He can take your faults, your failures, and your mistakes and transform it into the plan of God. This is not Houdini that just makes something appear or disappear. This is God who speaks all things by his word and creates by his word. So God looks at your faults and your failures and then starts to speak. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 listen to him as he explains it because what he says unto Abraham Abraham I want you to understand something you're going to be the father of many nations but now for this to happen it's God I want the latter portion it's God which quickeneth the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were so you dead in your sins and in your faults and trespasses here comes God he calls what you're not as though you are and because his words create even you haven't been that but now you must become that because he released his word on that Oh, God. Hallelujah. Anybody can comprehend God up in here? Is there anybody that can stretch your imagination? Because that's the only way you're going to have to deal with God. It's going to happen in your imagination. It's what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. He said, now unto him that's able to keep you from I'm in Jude 24. It's unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you. He said, I have the 
power to make you faultless. I know you're struggling and you're looking at yourself, but lift up your head and look at me. Because if you just look at me, you'll see a God that can handle your faults. You'll see a God that already handled it at an old rugged cross. I didn't wait for you to make the mistake. I didn't wait for you to sin. I already dealt with it. Before there was a sin, there was an answer. Before the foundations of the world, the Lamb was. Somebody tell God thank you. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he then tells us this. He said now unto him, he wants you to understand it because he wants you to get down something into your spirit. He said, this is the God that can do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. It's not abundantly, it's a unto him that's able to do exceeding I should say it's not exceedingly it's exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 according to the that worketh what power works in us out of your belly shall flow rivers <sighs> So he said, God's inside of you, not the third person of a trinity, the fullness of God dwells in you. That's why he tells you to open your mouth, lift your hands, release God into your situation. Somebody release God. Look what he says in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. Hear this, Isaiah 12 and verse 3. With joy you shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Verse 4. And in that day, everybody say in that day. What day? In the day that you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. In the day that the water, in other words, in the day that the water and the well are portable in you. So wherever you go, you can draw water. So you can be in a situation where you're dry, but you know how to draw water. I don't draw water from the situation. I draw water from the well that's... So if I'm on my job, I know how to draw. Folk getting on my... Last nerve. I'm gonna slap somebody. So I know I know how to you know how you are, your little rubber band neck. You know how you are. I'm gonna draw some water. I'm gonna draw some water. Right here, right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw. Uh, touch your neighbor, tell them the well is portable. So when things get hot, I have a well. I have a well. And in fact, what the Bible says, uh, keep that verse up, please, of Isaiah, because I'm not done with it, um, of, of Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4. But the Bible says in, that, that when God had Israel to dig a well, that the way the Israelites dug the well is that the elders sang to the well. You got to learn to sing to your well. And the Bible said what they sang is, spring up a well. <laughs> you got to learn to sing to your well till it springs. Um, now, but look what he says. He says, now, in that day, in what day? In, in the day in which the well is portable that's inside of you, in that day, when that happens, in that day, you shall say, shake someone's hand and say, praise the Lord. See, this, this, is, this, is, this is not a ritual. This is not something we just do in church to do. We're commanded to do it. That's why I shake your hand and I say, praise the Lord, because I'm told to do it. Hold on. Why in that 
day should I say, praise the Lord. The Hebrew word is halal. It means to act clamorously foolish, to boast, to shine, to rave. In that day, you shall say, praise the Lord. So when you shake someone's hand and you tell them, praise the Lord, you are telling them, act clamorously foolish, boast, shine, rave, because you have a well. Your answer is portable. Your answer travels with you. You're waiting for something to come outside of you, and he's... Your well is portable. So he said, in that day, you need to get excited and admonish people to praise me. So when you shake someone's hand and say, praise the Lord, what you're admonishing them to do is praise God with your entire being. Now, when they go to praise him, they start to say hallelujah because I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall there's a well inside of me I'm irritated right now but there's a well inside of me I'm frustrated right now but there's a well inside of me I'm lonely right now but there's a well inside of me I'm depressed right now but there's a well how do you release that well praise him Lift your hands, open up your mouth, and throw a praise fit all up in this house. Praise them like you lost your mind. Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch your neighbor, say, how much water do you need? Yeah, yeah, how thirsty are you? How much, how much water do you need in your situation? Because depending on how much water you need, you're going to have to draw it out. And how do you draw it out? You praise them with the intensity of the water you need. So, baby, if you only need a sip, praise him a little bit. But if you need a monsoon, you need a tsunami. You go nuts all up in the house. I ain't praise him to impress you that I'm spiritual. I'm not praising him so you can think I'm holy. I praise him because I need him. Oh, I'm just waiting a moment because somebody, somebody's drawing some water. So I'm just waiting a moment. I'm waiting for you to get your drink. I'm, I'm just waiting a moment. I'm just waiting a moment. Somebody. Duh. Oh, God. Got mine. I got mine. Tell somebody beside you, tell them, I got mine. 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 Oh, you're, you're liberty. You know that. You can stand or sit as you want. You're liberty. If you want to be seated, that's fine. That's all up to you. Hold on. Scripture says that in the days of Abraham, that he dug a well. But then the Bible says that Isaac found out that the Philistines had filled up the well. So the scripture says, Isaac digged again the wells of his father. Mm, God. See, you're not understanding. 
my well didn't start with me. My well so deep till it goes down through generations all the way back to Pentecost. My well is 2,000 years deep. And what you got to do sometimes is dig up your father's well. Huh, that's, I love, that's why I love these hymns. Because it helps us to dig up some of the forefathers wells. What are you trying to say? What I'm saying is the forefathers, uh, you know, let me tell you why. Uh, that sometimes we don't experience what some of our forefathers did. Because when they heard someone had cancer, folk took off from their job, took vacation time, shut in the church, and fasted and prayed. Until God sent an me give up my vic give up Mickey. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> yeah. See, you gotta dig up some of these things. I don't know how you were born, but I was born out of the old school church, and I thank God for it. We didn't just have all night prayers, we had shut-ins. We had shut-ins. Start Friday night and you didn't get out till Sunday. Everybody brought their clothes, brought toothpaste, toiletries, change of clothing. The kids, the babies, everybody came. And everybody fasted except those 12 years and under. You brought food for them, you took them out to the kitchen, and you fed them. Everybody else ate. Everybody else ate God. We pray on shifts. Your turn to go to sleep. Y'all go snore over there. We're going to pray over here. And when we done praying and the shift is up, we wake you up and we going to sleep and you pray. So there's no break of the chain. Stop and have Bible studies in the middle of it. Folk with, my God, when you started Sunday morning, my God, they, well, you didn't have to crank nothing up. You didn't have to beg nobody to lift their hands, beg nobody to open up their mouth. Everybody had a turbo praise. And went over the slow mountain stuff. Everybody started off in high gear. You got to dig up some of those wells. Come on, lift your hands and open up your mouth. And I need to dig up some of the wells of my father. I need to dig up the intensities and the passions of my fathers. Come on, I need to dig up the fire of the brush arbor people. Ah. He caught on a rubber and the rubber bow shutter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The old saints never miss church. You know the philosophy of the old saints? If you sick, this was the place for you to be. I got a cold. I got to stay home. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Old saints, you came. Why? So the elders could lay.